my attempt to recreate the open source version of the DJI Air Gesture drone. From my last two videos, I've managed to successfully get my drone to take off and land on command. In this video, I'm going to take it a step further by adding in a third command, which is for the drone to follow me along its yo axis. I would get it to come closer and further away from me, but I'm not quite there yet, and I also don't want the drone to fly right into my face and cut me. I mean, at times the drone would act like this. To understand how your following works and how not to crash a drone like how I did, we first have to go back into the body of my younger self to explain the process of getting the drone to follow me. Okay, so what's going to happen today is that we're going to essentially do a command. So I'm going to give it this command so that it can lift off. And once it's up in the air, I'm going to give it a command which is like this, which means to follow me. And once it's in follow mode, if I move over here, it will detect, okay, I'm out of the threshold. And essentially the drone will rotate that way along its your axis. And if I do the same over here, then it must do the same and rotate like that. So that's essentially the test that we're going to be running today. So yeah, let's give it a test and see how it goes. And then when we give a gesture like this, the drone will autonomously push the like and subscribe button to this channel. And then upon landing it, it will also give a tap on that bell icon. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the build. Now the drone with the Pixhawk Autopilot is not exactly perfect. If you've seen its hovering capabilities, it sort of oscillates around a single point and it's not really as stable like the DJI drones. Now there's a couple of ways we can solve this. One is to use a DJI flight controller, the A3 with multiple redundant GPS modules which would allow centimeter level accuracy. That would be really great but it's really expensive. And I've already just gotten comfortable programming the Pixhawk. There's also GPS with RTK, which stands for Real-Time Kinematics. But this requires for you to have a base station that will relay the position data to the drone to achieve centimeter level accuracy, which is not ideal if you want to take your drone out to the beach and just forget about the base station. So instead, I tried out this PX4 Flow device, which is an optical flow sensor that includes a built-in sonar rangefinder. From what I found, it's a cheap alternative and is said to keep your drone stable at lower altitudes. Well, mostly be testing out my drone. This is a great option because I noticed that the DJI Tele drones use a vision. Hello? Okay. This is a great option because I noticed that the DJI Tele drones use a vision positioning system, which consists of a camera and a 3D infrared module, which is located at the bottom of the drone. So when I tried this out for myself, it didn't work because for some unknown reasons. And then after much digging, I found out that the optical flow sensor can't operate without the rangefinder. Hmm. And now the rangefinder on the PX4 flow sensor had some other type issues which my younger self could not figure out at the time. But I did however order a lighter sensor called the TF Mini S from Amazon which would serve as a better replacement of the inoperable Sona rangefinder. It also sports better accuracy and range. I'm really hoping that this rangefinder would come in time so that I can use it for this project. But for now I'm just going to have to fly commando and just rely on the low accuracy GPS positioning as well as the finicky parameter for 3D position hover and hope that nothing goes wrong. So moving on, I encountered another issue where I toppled over my drone. Yep, yet again. This time, my OpenCV AI kit, you know, the Oak one, just stopped working suddenly and I just couldn't figure out why until eventually the sprinklers came on and I realized that the grass was damp at the time of flying and me like an idiot for just attaching the Oak one to my drone without any enclosure. Silly younger me. I can only imagine that the moisture from the grass made contact with the bare OpenCV AI kit. So instead, I spoke to Brandon from Luxonus and he said he will send me over a new Oak One with an aluminum enclosure. I won't lie, this thing looks really cool. Much better than that 3D printed crap I made a while back. I'll have a discount link below for the first 100 people if you'd like to get your own. 
So in the meantime, I already had this beefy oak tea with an aluminum enclosure, which I was trying to avoid using because it was a bit too bulky and heavy, which is not that bad, but it would also shorten the battery life and throw off the scent of gravity, which is what I only realized later on in this project. The benefit of using the oak tea is that you are able to calculate depth from its stereo cameras. Do you know what this means? Well, we could actually use it to eventually maintain a fixed proximity to myself. But that we'll do in another video and also once I've completed all of the side quests that I might have. So back to the main quest which is your following. So I had a bit of a crash and this is the other piece of it. So making it turn on its yaw is not really very safe. Whenever you turn the yaw, it's not just gonna turn on its axis, it's going to actually lower its height or altitude. Maybe experience some thrust loss. So I think maybe I need to calibrate it and hopefully we don't get the same problem again. So there was a couple of problems. The first problem that we had was that the drone was oversteering on the yaw axis. So instead of, say if I was detected over here, instead of turning like that to get me in the shot, it would oversteer and look that way, which is not what you want. So I just need to adjust one of the calibration coefficients so it gets me in the center, more or less, rather than oversteering. So that's the one issue that we had. The second issue was the latency that we're getting from the Raspberry Pi to our laptop. So on board the Raspberry Pi, if we hooked it up to an HDMI screen, things may look like they're running in real time, but the images that I'm seeing on my laptop is very laggy and there's a lot of latency. It looks like it's almost getting stuck. Now, the reason for this is number one, we're running a remote desktop <laughs> from the Raspberry Pi streaming to my mobile phone, which is acting as a router. And that is relaying the images to my laptop. Now I think we can save a lot of resources by cutting out the remote desktop and rather just streaming the images directly from the Raspberry Pi to a browser on my laptop. So essentially we're not sending the entire desktop running as it is. It's just so that we can understand what's happening on the Raspberry Pi as real time as we can possible. And there could also be a noise or distance issues. So when the drone is up in the air, there's a lot of things that's happening, noise, calculations from the Pixhawk, GPS, radio, all these frequencies all occurring at one time and maybe the distance to my phone and to the laptop is creating some additional latency. I'm not sure how big of a problem that is but the first step I think is let's test out the streaming and changing our your calibration and see how far we get with that. Cool! So let's just hold up, hold up, hold up. This is not what it looks like. From the video, it sort of looks like I've got the drone to follow me, right? Oh, younger me, you are so naive. So this, as you will see, or as I will soon realize, was that the drone was turning on its own. It was drifting, and I just happened to be at the same field of view of the drone's camera at the time. It was purely coincidental. So this explained why it looked like it worked in one direction and not the other. So after a series of tests and flights, I've managed to figure out why it was actually doing this. It essentially came down to just, wait for it, wait for it, recalibrating the drone's compass. <laughs> I know, and here I was racking my brains out, thinking it was something wrong with my code. It worked. It worked. Anyways, moving on. There is one last side quest that I had to complete before I can get this drone you are following me, which was to implement tracking. Now detection is great, but it can be quite erratic. So my first go-to was to store the previous centered positions of the bounding box in an array, and the new value would be a smoothed average of the prior values. This could work, but it may run a bit slower. Not significantly, of course. But instead, I've opted to use the almighty call mod filter. 
If you don't already know what the Kalman filter is, I have a whole video which you can watch right over here explaining what it is, how it works using a Pokemon analogy. I admit I really like Pokemon. Get yourself a new life! Guess who's back? Stay. The reason why I chose a two-dimensional Kalman folder is because it is recursive, meaning that it just uses the previous measurement to update the current measurement, thus saving valuable computing resources. If there's anything I learned in my engineering degree and masters was the Kalman folder. Thank you, Control Systems 101. Now there's better methods out there, but this worked for my application. It worked really well. I think the battery is running a bit low, so we're experiencing thrust loss, which is not so good. <laughs> so I'm gonna change the battery and then hopefully it'll work. I expect it to run a little bit better because we are gonna use a lighter battery, so we don't have too much load on it. I think right now there's a lot of load. Okay, so let's do our last and final test so that we can get our drone to follow us. Yeah, this was a really great journey. I mean, I learned a lot from this whole process of working with drones in general. So just to sum things up, we are able to take a drone and make it take off and land just by using body gestures. I can even do it with hand gestures, but it's not recommended because I don't want to slice off my fingers by mistake. <laughs> so the other thing that we're able to do is be able to get the drone to follow me around uh, just by following my body gestures. Now, it's, I know it's not perfect because it's a bit jittery, um, but it works. There's a lot of work that we can do to improve it, to make it smoother and that, but I think it's just it's too much to cover in just one video. We'll need to take it forward later on. But yeah, this is a great starting point. I mean, instead of having to rely on close solutions like DJI, for example, to have tracking and following, we can create our own open source solution. I think that's just amazing. And like I said, this has been a great journey. I've learned a tremendous amount of things just by building up the drone, programming it and flying it. So if you see yourself working with drones, I highly recommend going the DIY solution instead of just buying an off-the-shelf programmable drone like the Tello. I'd rather get something like the Pixhawk, program it with the Raspberry Pi and just fly it yourself. Get to you become one with the drone, <laughs> as cheesy as it sounds, but yeah. So yeah, I'm really proud of how far I've come with this project. Now, just know that this project is not yet finished. 
there's still a lot that we can do now that we have a platform for autonomous drone experiments. So if you'd want me to cover something in particular, then just let me know in the comments down below and I'll build it for you. What I currently have in mind is to refine the your following in conjunction with a better tune Better, better altitude stabilization sensors whenever they do arrive. And if this works out, then I'll definitely implement the proximity following gesture control, where the drone will be following me and I'll just be able to adjust its position using my hands. Also, instead of using object detection, it would make sense rather to use pose estimation for this. So definitely subscribe with that bell icon to get notified of when I do upload these videos in future. And lastly, if you'd like the source code, boss list, video tutorials, blueprints, and the behind the scenes of how I made the gesture control drone using the OpenCV AI kit and Raspberry Pi, then consider checking out my 16-in-1 mega course in computer vision and AI. All the links will be down below. And also a huge shout out to channel members and sponsors Roboflow, which you can use for annotation and training of your AI models. Thank you as well to our elite augmented engineers, Andre, Shane Prokop, and Claudio Barsan. You guys are great supporters of this channel. Getting ready? Alright, watch this. For my first trick. <laughs> Come on, first trick. You can do it. You can do it. Why is it working? <laughs> Okay, here we go, class. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next part of the series. Cheers for now.